what's up guys and welcome back to my channel my name is priscilla i'm a nigerian women's wear designer based in the uk this video is going to be one of your personal favorites because it is going to be a pattern tutorial in which i show you guys how to make this flounce insert i don't know if i'll call it a sleeve or if I'll call it um, a fold or a fall because it sits into you know the seam where your dash would normally be so it sits into that seam and because of how it's sort of cut it has that flowy circular fall over your shoulder so depending on you you can decide to make your sleeve more dramatic or turn it down just to suit your preference if you'd like to see how I made this blouse that has this sleeve or insert design make sure to keep on watching subscribe if you haven't already so you know whenever i put up new videos every week i feel like i'm trying to get back into the rhythm of making tutorials often but because i have this new part-time job that takes my time and i have sewing classes and i'm married so like it's a real balancing act right now and through the grace of god i hope i'll be able to do everything and still continue to make videos for you guys so let's jump straight into this tutorial if i can't do the sewing in this particular video it's going to be the next video coming up so it's not too long and sort of exhausting to watch so let's get straight into this video give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed comment your thoughts and ideas down below and i'll see you guys in my next one I'm going to be working with the following materials and tools to create this top sleeve design. The first being my basic bodies. I have my front and my back, which I already have tutorials for, and it will be linked down below. I also have some solid tape, my pattern master, the different types of scissors that I'll be using. I have my marker pen, pencil, eraser, and my sharpener. I also have some pins for when I'm ready to sew, as well as my tape measure. For fabrics, I'm going to be combining two materials together. The front is this cotton print that I got when I went to Luxembourg. It has this really lovely combination of blues and whites, and I love that it goes really well with the other one on the side. That one I have two meters of, but I'll only be needing about a meter of it to create this blouse. I also have some interfacing which I'll be using to stiffen my front and back neckline facings and I also have a long white invisible zip. Invisible zips are not really my friends but I want to actually start to use them more because they look really nice on the back of dresses, tops and so on. The first thing you need to do in terms of pattern is you need to duplicate your basic bodies, your front and your back. You need to transfer the darts the waistline bust line your notches and just indicate which pattern is actually what remember to also write where the center back and the center front is because that is crucial so the first step i'll be doing is to reduce the front and back shoulders by 2.5 centimeters or one inch because i just want it to sit a lot nicer into the shoulder when i have it on so i'm just drawing in a new armhole for the front here like so and I'm going to be repeating the same thing for the back shoulder. Once that is done, I'm going to be extending the vertical lines on the front and the back. So this allows us to divide the bodies into panels and we're going to be fixing the, the flounce into the seam that the panels have. So I just extended that for the front and extended it for the back as well. But you want to ensure that the width of the panels uh, along the shoulders are the same because they have to fit together when you actually stitch them. So if we measure the, the panel width for the front, so the first one and the second one, you want to ensure that they are the same width for the back along the shoulder line here like so. So I'm just going ahead to adjust the back one so it fits with the front because when you divide these panels, you have to join the shoulders of the front to the backs together and then the seam which that those panels will be joined back through is what you will actually be fixing your flounce or your ruffle into. So I'm going to end up with four panels in total, two for the front and two for the back in terms of the pattern. So next up, I'm creating a center back waist dart, which is about two centimeters or one inches wide. And this just prevents a zip bulge from forming when I've actually finished sewing everything all together. I'm just curving this back into the top back and curving it down into the bottom back of 
the bodies like so so once that is all done we are going to be working with this curved back seam instead of the sh original straight one that the basic bodice has The next step is optional, but I like having facings to finish off necklines of my dresses or tops or jumpsuits because I just think it makes it look really nice and really simple. So my front facing is going to be 5 centimeters or 2 inches wide down the center front and it's going to be 3 centimeters or 1 inch wide along the shoulder. And I'm just connecting both points like so. So by the time we plan out our back and this is actually cut and sewn in along the neckline, there is a nice and smooth seam along the neck of your blouse. So I'm going to plan the back facing like so it's five centimeters wide down the center back and it's three centimeters wide along the shoulder and i'm going to be connecting both of them like so with that done we have all of our panels planned and we're good to trace out so the first one is the panel one which sits on the center front of your blouse second one is the panel two which is joined along the mid dot seam on the side. We have the center back panels, which is panel three, and we have panel four, which is on the side of the back of the blouse. We also have our facings, which we'll be tracing out later on as well. So I've gone ahead to trace out my panel one. As you can see, I added a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around, and then I added a two centimeter hem allowance on the bottom. I have my panel two on the side like so. I just added my one centimeter seam allowance all the way around and my two centimeter hem allowance for the center back panels i have my panel three which has the same amount of seam allowance as panel one and panel two as well as that two centimeter hem allowance so it allows you to fold in the hem nice and neatly when you're actually sewing i have my last panel four on this side like so and this is the side panels for the back for the center front, just remember to cut it on a fold except you want a seam up the center front. Just cut it on a fold so you have one piece that sits in the middle of the front of the blouse. And then you cut two pieces to go on the side, two pieces to go on the center back. So you have your zip sitting through that center back seam and you have two pieces for your back side panels. So I'm going ahead to trace out my facing which has a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around except along the center front because I want to cut my facing on the fold for the front. For the back I have a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around including the center back because my zip is going to sit there and you need to cut two for the back. Now to the main event, the ruffle pattern, which is going to be sitting into the seam of the front and on the back along that mid that point. I've just gotten myself some fresh pattern paper and we're going to be tracing off that vertical line that we extended upwards on this plan. So I'm going to trace it from the waistline all the way to the shoulder because that's where the flouse is going to sit. Now I'm going to extend along the shoulder by 20 centimeters or 8 inches. Just remember, the more you extend it at this point, the more dramatic it's going to be on your garment. So I'm just going ahead to connect that 20 cm point to my waistline and I'm adding in my bust line dot and indicating that this is actually the front. So next up, I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it to the other side of the paper and we're going to be tracing off the back line because I want this to be one piece that is fitted into the garment and not something that has a seam along the shoulder. So I'm just tracing out the back line, vertical line like so. I'm starting from the shoulder point and I'm tracing down towards the bust and I'm just extending it downwards. It doesn't get to the waist because I didn't want it to go all the way to the waist. It's just about maybe I'll say like six centimeters below the waist and I'm connecting that our 20 cm or eight inch point down to where the back line actually stops. You can go deeper if you want to, but I just wanted it to stop there like so. So now that I've indicated that that's the back, we can actually go ahead and slash and spread this panel. So my panels are about three centimeters or one inch wide because I really wanted the the fall and the fullness of this to be evenly distributed so i've just i've decided to divide the whole thing 
by three centimeters starting from the shoulders all the way till the end and we're going to be cutting this particular pattern piece out and then we're going to be slashing it open and spreading it If you like, you can number your panels all the way to however many you have. I just decided to do this so I can easily explain to you guys at what point we need to extend things more. So I've slashed all my panels open. It actually looks like the rib cage of a human being or an animal, but this is what the pattern looks like at the moment. So I've gotten myself fresh pattern paper and we're going to be spreading this slashed pattern on the paper underneath so i'm just taping down my panel one on this end like so and we're going to be spreading by about four centimeters at the bottom and would we'll increase it to five centimeters when we get to like the middle panels so i'm spreading panel two and panel three and i'm going to do that all the way till i get to the panels that sit around the shoulder because that i will want to spread a bit more so i can have like a pleat or gathers along the shoulder and that just gives gives this particular ruffle or flounce more fullness when it's actually sewn into the shoulder or into that mid that seam of the blouse. I'm just going ahead to spread panel 4 by 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches and I'm going to repeat this all the way to about panel 8. So when I get there, which is exactly the shoulder point, I'm going to cut this particular point open and we're going to be spreading it even more because I want to have extra fabric to work with to add fullness to the shoulder. So along the bottom sort of curve of this particular spreading, we're going to be going out by 12 centimeters or 5 inches and 3 centimeters on 1 inch along the inner curve. So I'm just taping now panel 10 like so, which is the panel that sits on one side of the shoulder. So once that is done, you are good to continue spreading out all of the remaining panels until you get to the very end or the very last panel that you have. So I'm just going ahead to spread this panel here like so by 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches and I just add one more piece of tape so this actually stays nice and flat. So once that is done, we know we can then start to connect the panels together at points that they were separated so we have one cohesive pattern to work with. So using my pattern master and some pen, I'm just going ahead to use the curved end of my pattern master to connect my panels you have points where you would rule out the pointy edges of the pattern that you don't actually need and that is that's actually fine because you want this edge of your garment to be nice and smooth and not to have angled points. So once you get to the end, just remember to come in like a nice pointed curve or like a nice pointed edge because you want that to sort of finish off into nothing when you fit it into your garment so i'm just going to go ahead and add a one centimeter seam allowance along the inner and along the outer curve of my pattern i'm adding my shoulder notch here like so i'm going to go ahead and add my grain line telling me what direction i should cut this pattern when i'm cutting it on fabric and then i'm going to cut out this particular pattern piece and add any other annotations that i need so this is what the ruffle or flounce pattern looks like I really like the shape i just think it's really cool you can decide to go big or make it smaller depending on what you like if you don't want to have a raw edge along the outer side you can cut two pairs a pair to go on each side so these are all of the patterns all finished and done it's a relatively straightforward sort of project to do and it's something that you could do on a weekend and you could add it to you can add the flounce to a dress or to a jumpsuit if you want to so the next video is going to be the sewing tutorial i hope you guys look forward to that when it's up i will definitely let you guys know and i'm excited to actually show you what i came up with to sew this pattern you would need a roughly two and a half meters of a fabric if you're just making the blouse if you want to add this to any other designs you have the freedom to do so as well but I just wanted you guys to know that i finally have a patreon page and if you want to become a patron and support the work that i do on youtube so i can continue to actually make videos and projects for you guys there will be a link down below so you can choose whichever tier that you're comfortable with and support like all the amazing things that we've 
created together over the years.